What's going on guys? I am gonna go over three points today of why you screw up all your seller appointments. Maybe not all of them, but why you screw up most of them. So if you're just getting traction, you're just starting to maybe do some driving for dollars and do some cold calling, you're sending some direct mail, you got the phone ringing a little bit and you're actually getting in people's living rooms to make them, you know, have appointments to see if you can buy the house. I'm gonna give you three things of why you're screwing this up. One, you are too busy thinking about what your needs are and what you want. You're sitting there thinking, man, this house is really messed up. I think I can buy this. This is going to be a great flip. I'm going to make all this money. I need to buy it this, blah, blah, blah. You're thinking in your head all these things that you're going to do, but you forget to listen to the seller and understand and find out what their needs and wants are. Remember, this is not about a house. You do not, we are not a real estate business. We are a marketing and sales company. So if their needs big enough, and you can solve their need, they're gonna sell you the house. So stop thinking about what you're gonna get and what your needs are, and start thinking about what the seller's needs are. Two, you don't connect with the sellers. When I go to a house, my main goal is not to buy the house. My main goal is to build a relationship and connect with the seller. So how do I do that? Well, I walk in the house, first thing I say sometimes, pre-COVID, I would say, if it's a lady, I'm a hugger. You know, I break the ice immediately. I find a way to get them comfortable and watch them melt away and say, ah, this is a normal guy. So another thing I'll do is I don't wear fancy clothes. I don't drive in a fancy car. If I think the seller maybe is really, really blue collar, then I'm gonna show up in my gym shorts and a t-shirt and my tennis shoes. If I think they're more of a professional, you know, in some ways I'm gonna wear golf shorts or jeans and a collared shirt. That's the most I'll ever wear, but I'm dressing for the occasion. So they are not, you know, thinking oh, this whole time, oh, this guy's gonna try to take this from me. He's some slick back sales guy. So I go there and I connect with the seller. When I'm walking the property and walking it, I'm not talking about the house. They're showing me the house but I'm talking about them and their life and who they are and what's going on. And, and then I add in things like my life, you know, maybe they're getting divorced. So I talk about my parents getting divorced. I talk about my struggles in my marriage. Um, maybe that it's a rental. I talk about some shitty rentals we've had or things like that. I connect with them and I do it in a way that is not fake. I'm truly trying to connect with the, them as a person. I want to know who they are and I want to learn about them and I want to make a new friend. And at the end of the day, if I buy the house, great. If not, that's great too. I met somebody new. You never know what you're gonna get from that person down the road. So number three, you try to lock them up on the spot. I see this all the time on people saying, take your contract with you, get them to sign it. There's competition coming. You gotta get them to sign it first. Get them to sign, 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 sign. No, I never, ever, ever take a contract with me. Maybe I have a blank one in my car, if it's a good deal and everybody's like, yeah, let's do this, let's go. I don't care if there's somebody coming behind me. I don't care if there's five people in front of me. I don't care. Sellers do business with people who they know, like, and trust. Yes, there's people that will always pay more money than me. I know that. So I'm not trying to pay the most money in this market, in any market period. So I go there and I go build a relationship. I tell them why I'm better I tell them why I'm more professional and I show them that throughout the walkthrough that we know what we're doing and we actually care about them and not just the property. Yes, there is some people that this is just transactional, but most people, the homes we're buying, it's not transactional. There's meaning, there's memories, something happened, whatever. You have to be there. And so if you connect with people on an emotional side, then you don't need to lock them up on the spot. I've gotten so many deals that I've paid less than other people and they sell me the house because they know that one, I will close and I'll do what I say I'm gonna do because I built good rapport and told them about my past deals and my life and all those things, so they trust me. And I put real earnest money down. You know, a lot of times we're putting $10,000 non-refundable. You don't have to do that, but at least put 500 or $1,000 earnest money down. Um, and so I, and I, my philosophy, I tell sellers this all the time, if it's a good deal today, it will be a good deal tomorrow. So people like that and they're gonna be like, you know what, I actually like this guy better I, because he's more confident that he's not trying to close me on the spot and lock it up with a scarcity mentality. And at the end of the day, my goal is not to buy the house. My goal is to go there and meet somebody new. So that's three tips of why you screw up seller appointments.